Welcome to End User Tools Presents Japanese Beetle or JB Visual Data Collection Using ArcGIS Survey 123. I'm Jenny Sauer. I'm a mobile solutions specialist with the PPQ Field Ops End User Tools Group. We're the ones who develop these apps for you all to use and then want to try to make sure that you feel comfortable using them. So welcome to the Japanese Beetle Visual um, surveys training using ArcGIS Survey123. Uh, thank you all for being here early on time and ready to go. Um, I asked you all to complete a preparedness poll that I just put, put out there for you all. And thank you for that. I'm going to go ahead and end that poll. Um, it looks like a lot of you, you were able to pick from multiple choices. You've been taking advantage of, of a lot of ways to be prepared for today's training um, by studying survey protocol, by being sure you uh, feel savvy with the device you're using, whether that's an iPad or maybe an iPhone, um, that you've looked into the ArcGIS field maps training. We have um, a user guide and we have a, a playlist that you can access um, to watch 10 little kind of bite-sized trainings on how to use field maps. Um, we also have the Survey123 training, which is really more appropriate to this training today. So I'll show you where you can find that training if you don't know about it. And you're here, so this is a big part of that. Um, there may be other ways that you've prepared and some of you indicated that. So thank you for all of you um, giving me a good view of how you've prepared for today. Um, really, today should be the like the top step of the ladder, I guess you could say, that you've kind of prepared, you've got all the foundational knowledge there, and you just need to know, how do I use this app and collect data? Um, what, how do I use this form? So it's just the last little tips on how to use this form in case you need to know how it kind of applies to entering data for Japanese Beetle visual surveys. Japanese Beetle, some of you may know, has um, three National rele nationally released surveys. And they are visual, which we will talk about for the next half hour or so. We have a trapping survey, which comes directly after today's visual training. So if you are also in need of that, you can just hang on and keep watching. And then thirdly, there are aircraft inspections. And these use both survey one, two, three, and field maps. So it's very um, helpful for you to be prepared on kind of feeling savvy or, or feeling comfortable using those apps. They break down this way. The green is the survey one, two, three. So visual and aircraft inspections use this ArcGIS survey one, two, three application. And the trapping surveys uses field maps. So wanted to make sure that you're aware of that. Firstly, before we dive too deeply in, I want to make sure that you know where to find a few things. I'm going to put some links in the chat and show you my Google web browser. And this link here is the first link I've just stuck in the chat. And please share if people come later. Please feel free to copy and paste and help me out there as people come in. Um, but this is the Mobile Data Collection Tools website. I would highly recommend keeping this bookmarked and watching it often. It's very often updated with the most latest. For instance, this training here today is being recorded and that recording will show up here on the main page at the bottom under the video gallery. And there are categories here or you can search by keyword. Um, so if I go ahead and search for, um, let's say grasshopper, I can just do grasshopper Mormon cricket that way and I'll see everything related to that anywhere that's mentioned and here's that training. So when, uh, give me about a week or so, but once this recorded training is done, you'll be able to review it here or share it with those who maybe missed the Japanese beetle training. It'll show up right here at the video gallery. We also have general training documents where you can get a user guide for field maps and a user guide for survey one, two, three. Those training videos are also found down here to support that. They follow the user guides, take you through it. And then pest program specific training documents shows you for each pest program that has a national app created by my team. There's Japanese Beetle. For each, you can see there is a user manual and a quick reference guide. So here's your visual surveys documents to follow along if you'd like them. 
Uh, the quick reference is just like one page, like a little cheat sheet to take out in the field. Um, and secondly, the second link that I gave you there is a quiz for the training here today. And as you can see, this is for visual surveys and using survey one, two, three. And this quiz, I don't care at all if you open it now and go ahead and answer things as I as I save them and as you find the answers, it's meant to give you a little knowledge check or a little reminder along the way, and that is totally fine. One key thing is this third question, the email address. This you'll need to type in yourself carefully, and this is where you will get an automated uh, response to your email address saying that you've completed this training. That's helpful to me and you. It's helpful to me because then I know that you were here, that you got what I said, that the words that I spoke hit, hit your brain and you actually understood them. And I can make sure that I adjust training so that um, maybe I do better if I need to. Also, you get that email and you can provide that to your supervisor and uh, you know, put it in your little stack of accomplishments for the quarter, whatever helps you out. But I, uh, supervisors are starting to look for these emails so that they can see that their um, users are ready to go. So be careful with this question number three, make sure you put in an email address really nice and neat so that it comes to your email. Um, so those two links get you started on quite a bit and I wanted to get you those before I went too far into this. What are we gonna talk about today? Uh, we're going to talk about visual surveys today, and um, just to follow will be the trapping <clears throat> training and later this afternoon, aircraft inspections. All the same link, you can jump in if you need to or jump out if you don't, don't need that training. You will hear a little rep repetition. Um, I'm not a robot, but there are some points that are really important that we get through. So if you attend another one, please be patient with me. Um, if I have to say the same thing again, just write it in your notebook or write it in the air if you need to, but take note of it and, and just be patient with me. Today, some of the objectives that we're gonna cover, signing into ArcGIS Survey 123 requires that you connect using a URL. This connects to where the survey is hosted online in the cloud in an enterprise portal. <clears throat> and this year we create a training version of each survey so that you can go ahead and practice um, play around a little bit, feel comfortable in a training version, and that has a different sign-in URL, a different portal to uh, manage and sign in through. That is covered really nicely in our video training, so I'm not going to go too deeply, but I want you to understand the difference. Um, we'll talk about if you want to use a disconnected workflow in Survey123, you can. We're going to have a look at the data form for Japanese Beetle and we're going to make sure you know where to go to get help. So Survey123 is a form-based um, mobile application to collect data. So it really is kind of like, um, to me, it's, a, it's like any form you've ever filled out um, online where it asks you a question and you answer and it's very intuitive and takes you to the next one. So it's really not that difficult. Again, there is a user guide for you and self paced training so that you can kind of take yourself through things and you're welcome to look back at those little videos um, just to refresh yourself if you find yourself getting stuck. On first openings ArcGIS Survey123, you'll see something like this. It will ask you if you want to sign in with ArcGIS Online or manage ArcGIS connections. And I've got a red box around managing connections. You'll need to set up that enterprise connection with the URL um, and make that connection first. And then you'll, after that, always see something more like this. Um, and this is that enterprise URL that you've typed in from the HTTP, HTTPS all the way to the ArcGIS there. So you would have typed that in and then Survey123 remembers that and holds on to it for you. So then in future iterations, when you open Survey123, you'll see something like this and tap to sign into that enterprise portal or manage the connections and look for that training survey, which brings me really to our next point. Um, so if you were going to enter real data, you would go ahead and sign into this portal. If you were going to sign in to use a training survey, so ignore this shouldn't, this isn't a training map technically in survey one, two, three, it's a survey. 
um, but there is a map <laughs> component, so I just left that there. Um, but officially, that URL that you would connect to is this guy, maps.mrp.usda, and the training version URL is maps-stg.mrp.usda. All very similar, but let's point out the difference here. We got a dash STG. So think of that as stage or staging. That's a staging portal, and that is where only the training surveys live. And this is a very important one because we do want you to be able to use that training survey to practice, or in this case today, I'm going to use it to demonstrate to you what it looks like. But you do not want to put official data in a training survey. So be very sure when you are entering real data or official data, that it's going to this plain MRP official data collection URL, and that's what you're signed into. And when in doubt, sign out and check it out. Uh, wow, that was a lot of rhymes, but be very careful. Um, in any case, just be aware of these two locations and be sure you're in the correct one when you're collecting data. The disconnected mode workflow is possible in survey one, two, three. Um, what you do in any case is kind of this workflow when you have a Wi-Fi connection, you need to download a sur the survey to your device, regardless of whether you're going to be offline or connected to Wi-Fi. Um, in this case, Japanese Beetle does not have a inbox, so you don't need to refresh the inbox. If you're working disconnected, all you need is to download that survey and Wi-Fi off and walk on out and collect data. When you're collecting that, those surveys, you save them to an outbox, basically to the device, until you can connect back and then go ahead and open the inbox and send. Again, we don't need to refresh the net inbox with Japanese Beetle because we don't have one. So if you're going to work connected, let's fix that up a little bit. You would be connected, you would download your survey, you would collect data. Well, Wi-Fi is still connected, so you don't need that one. And then you don't need this one. Um, you would just collect the data. And as you collected those surveys, you would send them right along while connected to Wi-Fi. So it gets really simple if you're connected, but you certainly can be out in the field collecting data while disconnected from Wi-Fi. So let's have a look at that survey form. I'm going to go ahead and share my um, camera view of my iPad so you can have a look at that. This is a PPQ configured iPad, which means that I have all of these survey applications installed automatically. If you don't see these survey applications, then you will need to open a ticket with CECIT and have them installed. But otherwise, if you are on another device or not a PPQ managed device, these are free to download and install for yourself. So we're gonna go ahead and locate survey one, two, three. I'm going to tap it to open it as you would with any. Um, I can see right now that it's signing into that stage portal. So I know that I'm in the correct portal. Another way for me to know that I'm in the stage or training aspect of things is these surveys that I've previously downloaded all begin the title with the word training in all caps. And the thumbnails here say training in them as well. So I know that I'm in the correct enterprise portal, the stage portal, but if I needed to, I can check here in my um, profile and I see stage STG there. And if I needed to, I can sign out and, and then use that manage portal to sign into the correct one. This is also where I would download the survey if I didn't already have it. But as you can see, I have the visual survey sitting here. I'm going to open that up. And in order to collect data, all I have to do is hit this collect or add bar anywhere along the bar here. Again, I've got checks and balances all the way. The training is in the title. The tr this word training is in the thumbnail, in the description of what this survey does, training, training everywhere. So I know that I am OK to play in this survey. So I'll tap collect which opens the survey form. And I am connected to Wi-Fi, and so I've got a view of a map here. If I'm not connected to Wi-Fi, the GPS latitude and longitude are taken on kind of the back end. You won't be aware of it. 
but while connected to Wi-Fi, I have a map and I can tap on that map and correct that. In fact, I'll do that for you. I can also search for another address if I want to and move that spot if needed. I'm not going to, this is pretty good, um, but once I've decided I'm happy with where the map is, I can accept the location by tapping this check at the bottom. Um, as you can see, there are some red asterisks following some of these fields. That means they're required. There are some defaults set. For instance, this first agency set is set to default to APHIS. If I wanted to change that, I could just tap the other option. I can tap on a field and the keyboard kind of pops up for me to fill things in. I'm going to go ahead and say Jenny S and close that keyboard. There is a, a drop down menu. Sorry, I don't mean to make you dizzy here. There's a drop down menu with options to choose from for airport. I could also start typing an airport um, short abbreviation, and you can see it tries to guess what I'm going for, and then choose that. Let's say that's not none of my airport, my airport is just not listed here. Um, there is an option at the bottom for other. And if I tap other, I will get an additional question asking me to name that airport. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm in Denver. I'm going to say I'm at the Denver airport. There we go. Done. The next question does not have an asterisk, which means it's um, it is not required. So I can fill something out here if I want to. I'm going to write in test. I like to make sure that that's clear. And just moving down, um, moving down the list, answer the questions. Um, the place name, I'm going to say again, it's test and I'm going to put a one to it. Again, test for place comments. We're asked, are Japanese beetles observed? Yes or no? I'm going to say no. And we have an additional spotted lanternfly question here. And in this case, if I were to answer yes, I get a few more questions on, on that observation. And I'm asked to really kind of delineate what kinds of things were observed here. So I'm going to say there is an egg mass and nobody else there that I observed. And then the location of that specimen is another specific to SLF question. Uh, I'm going to say it was in the cockpit. And then I can make some comments on that as well. I'm going to say test again. And then down at the bottom, the last question is the survey date. And you can see it defaults automatically. This is today's date and timestamp for where I am. I'm in mountain time. But if I needed to update that, for instance, I've been working on the survey long enough and the time's no longer correct, I can go ahead and do that um, just by tapping on the field and updating that. Once my form is complete, I would always suggest going back to the top and just reviewing your answers. This is just a good practice. I'm sure a lot of you do it, but it doesn't hurt to give your, give your form one more kind of overview to make sure all of that data was put in correctly. I'm always surprised by finding things that I, I thought I did correctly and then I realize, oh, I, I really should have made an extra note there. So um, review your data form. And then once you're completed and happy with that form, this check at the bottom uh, is your step to submit that form. And you're given, since I am online, I have the option to send now, as I said. If not, I wouldn't see send now. I would only see save in the outbox. But even while connected, if you're unsure of your connection or you want to save those to review later um, in the day, <laughs> you can go ahead and save your forms to an outbox to send later. The caveat there is the outbox really does just live on your device until you send it. So be very careful not to hoard things in your outbox. It's like right, you wrote in your diary or it's in your private notebook until you go to the outbox and send those surveys. So I'm gonna save it to the outbox so you see what that looks like. And you can see before we only had a collect bar, now we have an outbox bar here. And it even indicates how many surveys are waiting in that outbox. So in order to send those surveys, I'm gonna tap outbox and it gives you a chance to review in a list form or in a map view if you so desire. So there's, there's my one survey. I would have pins all over if I took more. And then I can go ahead and send using this button at the bottom right. And, and off it goes, um, sent. And now I've got a little sent box that says these were sent and that out box is gone. So that is our data form. Let me get us back over here to 
our PowerPoint. What if we've talked about all things visual, Japanese visual surveys, and you still need help? Of course, that's possible, and things come up, right? So right now, the National Operations Manager for the Japanese Beetle Program is Leon Bunce. All things survey protocol, all things Japanese Beetle um, program related go to Leon Bunce. If you're with PPQ and you're having iPad issues, maybe signing in or maybe the app isn't there as we mentioned earlier, open a ticket with CECIT and get that um, figured out with them. If you need help, um, you can always reach out to end user tools. We will always try to support escalating tickets if they don't come through correctly or making sure you have the right wording. Um, portal access, access to that URL, you'll need a portal role. That's, um, that should start with your supervisor. Your supervisor has a couple of other um, ways, venues, I guess, or avenues might be the better word, to get more support. The local field GIS specialists supporting your area, for instance. And if you need access to that survey so that it shows up so that you can download it, you would have your supervisor email this webgis.connect um, email address to request access. So that these are some more um, kind of tools out there if you find yourself stuck. And really, again, all things training, go to that mobile data collection tools web page. You'll find documents that support the, the apps that are created. You'll find um, documents supporting the PEST programs that are created and videos galore. And um, so please keep that bookmarked and reach out if needed. Um, but always look there first because it's always being updated. So in a whirlwind, we discussed these two URLs to use to connect to managed connections in Survey123, the Enterprise or the USDA's MRP URL, and the training URL, which has that STG, remember, stage portal. So make sure you're in the right one when you are entering real data. That should be that Enterprise MRP URL. Um, we also reviewed or overviewed that disconnected workflow, which is totally useful out in the field. If you're if you're out in the field and Wi-Fi connection is iffy, go ahead and use that disconnected workflow to collect data. We had a look at the data form. There's some built-in um, contingent questions based on how you answer. Uh, we talked about some of the caution areas. If you have a if if you save things to an outbox, for instance, be sure that you are sending those by the end of the day when you can return to a spot where they can be sent connected to Wi-Fi. And we talked about getting some help. Um, there's no end to what things could go wrong, and and we try to give you a, a really good, strong foundation on how to avoid some of those issues, but you never know, and you need to know where to go. Um, so hopefully that gave you those answers. Um, also, just a quick reminder to take this quiz. It really is helpful to all of us all around, and it gives you that little email that says, hey, I attended this training. I kind of know what I'm doing. I answered these questions correctly. So just a little reminder to go ahead and do that. There is a comment in there that, uh, thanks, Vlad. Vlad put a comment in the chat for you all. The other airport field allows you to enter an airport code that is more than three letters. Um, for instance, the IATA airport code. Um, so that's a good good way to use that other airport field if you need that. So thanks, Vlad. Thanks for that comment. Um, finally, I always like to remain accountable, even though I've pointed you all kinds of directions for help. If there are questions, please do feel free to reach out if you feel like you wanted to see anything different. And I made sure that I allowed a little bit of time for questions here. So is there anything, if I pause now, that you would like to see again or that was unclear? or any questions at all that maybe I didn't cover today talking about the Japanese beetle visual surveys. Wow, what a what an easygoing group. I think you're going to really like using this app if you haven't before. And for those who have used it last year, it really is remaining fairly, fairly similar to last year's survey app. Um, so hopefully you'll you'll be well supported. What I'm going to do is go back a couple slides to the getting help 
without making you dizzy. Oops, there we go. And leave you on that so that you um, can maybe take notes if you if you didn't catch all of these options out there for you, or if you want to do a little screenshot that might work for you too. So I'm going to leave you on that and we have five minutes until we start the uh, trapping training. So I'm going to go ahead and be quiet, but please feel free to hang on and hang out. And if any questions do come up, I will be monitoring the chat. Thank you all so much for being such great participants and have a great rest of your day.